I'm really enjoying these lessons or messages from the seven churches. Yes, yes, amen. I'm learning so much about the things that they went through back then. It's the same thing we're facing day to day. Amen. So if you got your Bibles today, go with me to the book of Revelations. The church that we're going to talk about today is Tyra Teeter. I think I said that right. Yeah. Praise God. I've been studying today. Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to read the last verse, chapter number 1. Then I'll go down to verse number 18, chapter number 2. It says, The mysteries of the seven stars which thou saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars and the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou saw, are the seven churches. Now go with me to the second chapter, starting in verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Tyria, write these things, says the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and thy charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Amen. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast sufferest that women, that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fortification mm -hmm. and to eat things eat thing sacrificed in two idols. Mm -hmm. And I gave her space to repent of her fortification and she repented not. Yes. Behold, I will cast her in a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Mm -hmm. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I give unto every one of you according to your works. But I say unto you and to the rest in Tyria, mm -hmm. and many as have not this doctrine, which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put into you none other burden but that which you are already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron and a vessel of the potter till they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. And I give him the morning star. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you today, we thank you and we praise you for your blessing. God, I thank you for what I feel in this house today. God, I thank you for the anointing that's in this house today, God. God, take this word and to touch our hearts and our minds to you. God, we ask you, God, to walk up and down the avenues of this place today. God, open up our hearts and our minds, God, that they can receive from you. God, let us get out of the way, God, so the anointing can flow. God, and progress the breast across this house today, God. Father God, I thank you for what I feel. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, I, I give you praise and I give you honor and I give you glory, God, because without you, God, we are nothing, Father. God, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you just a little bit about this church. I told you last Sunday as I was preparing that the church that we did last Sunday, Pergamus, was the start of the Catholic Church. It was the prelude to it. If you study this church out that I'm going to minister to us about today, it's worthy. Oh, I want to say it right because I get beat a lot on Facebook for some reason. <laughs> this is where the Catholic Church started. It is in this church right here today that we're going to talk about. And as you see the qualifications of this church today, if you ever studied that kind of Catholicism, you'll understand that it's still the same principle that they use today that they did back when this was written. This was written several years. Hallelujah, glory to God, after Christ. But I want to talk to you just a minute about the things that they did right. And some things, if we go back and look at each one of the churches we've already covered, a lot of things that they do is the same thing. Because number one, he says, I know your works. We think that we think that our works is going to be all right. Because let me tell you something. Hallelujah, glory to God. If your heart ain't where it needs to be with God, your, your works ain't going to matter. Because if you ain't trying to live the way God wants you to live, your works is going to go out the door. Then he talks number two about this church. Your charity. And how much you give. I wish you'd go listen to the, the message that we talked on Wednesday night about giving. And we got to the New Testament about where Jesus was talking to him about giving. And what he said was this. If you ain't living with your where you needs to be, and if your righteousness ain't where it needs to be with God, you're giving. It's no good. Yeah. It's no good. You can give and give and give, but if you ain't living it the way God says that you need to live it, you ain't really in touch with God. <laughs> you do charity work. Number three, your service. Don't do your service just for hallelujah, glory to God. For me, do the service for the Lord. Do the service that God called you in to do and what God called you to do. Listen, everybody's not a preacher. Everybody's not a teacher. But everybody can be a witness that the servant can go out and do what God needs them to do. Come on. The fourth thing that he talks about you, that you do really good in this passage of Scripture is that their faith. I can't see so many people today in their walk. Their faith is so weak. Well, you know why your faith is weak? Because God's not number one in your life for one thing. And if you're, God's not number one, you ain't going to have faith. What is faith? Faith is what you believe in. Faith is what you believe in. Well, you know what? If you don't know what this is, how are you going to know what to believe? That's good. That's good. Because you've got to understand. Yes. It's your faith that's going to get you through when the preacher ain't there. Yeah. Your faith is going to get you through when your teacher ain't around. Yeah. Faith in knowing who God is is going to get you a long way on your everyday walk with God. Because there's going to be times you ain't going to have anybody. But you'll always have God. And you hold on to Him. You've got to have faith. Yes, because listen, the mountain that you're facing right now, you need the faith to get through that mountain, either get over that mountain, get around that mountain, or go through that mountain. You need faith in something. Yes. But you got to have faith. Listen to me. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's
it's impossible for you to live the way God wants you to live. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you don't know what the word is, you ain't going to have faith to make it from day to day. You've got to have faith. Amen. Don't have faith in man, have faith in God. Amen. That's what, yes it will. <laughs> if you look at me long enough, I'll let you down. Come on. But if you look to God, yes. the author and the finisher of our faith, the one that, that sent his only begotten son that we can have life, that have a, we look to him, he has faith in him, he won't let you down. Number five. And oh, God, have mercy on me. I'm the most impatient person they are. But the number five that he talks about is with patience. I want it done yesterday at two o'clock. <laughs> And God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sometimes the best thing to do is wait upon God to move in their situation. I've been guilty before trying to push God. I'm talking about me. Yes. Push God. God, I, I need it. God says you ain't ready for it. Come on. But we have patience and we have faith. When the right time comes and that door opens up, then you can walk through it and let God come in and meet your Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Then the last thing that he talks about. That he commands them for what they're doing good. Is there increasing works? Let's go back to what I said earlier. About the Catholic Church. Your works. In the eyes of man. Will deceive you. Yeah. Your works to make you look good mm. is going to destroy you. Come on. Yes. Come on. But if you're doing works and your works is increasing, then God's get the glory, yeah. and God's getting the honor, then the blessings will start coming for you. But if you're doing works just to look at you and get glory for you, you're missing the point. You're missing it. Churches are full of people today that they think their works is going to get them into heaven, but they're lost and they're dying and headed to hell. Your works ain't going to get you in the head. The lady's sister said about it. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that's going to get you to heaven. It's the blood of Jesus that shed his blood in Calvary that's going to get you in there. And that was the good things he talked about. Now let's talk about the bad things. If you noticed, in all of these churches so far that we've covered, there's been the good things and the bad things. There's four things that Jesus was against the church here at Tyrius. Four things. I, in the last couple of months, Every week, I've had people call me and want to come preach and minister here to this church. I'll stay under control, sister. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> they called. I've had them from South Carolina call me. 
I've had him from West Virginia call me, wanting to come and minister. But what you got to understand, this is what happened to this church. Mm -hmm. They let anybody come in, anybody sing, anybody preach, anybody teach. And God says, I'm against that. You got to understand, Brother Willis is back there. He can tell you. Hallelujah. I'm responsible for who sings, who preaches, who teaches under the anointing, not of the devil, but of God. The first thing that Jesus told him right here in the scripture. It says you permitted Jezebel to come and teach. I studied something out here just because when I get into studying I, I, I get fascinated and I want to go back and I want to look at things. So I went back and looked at Jezebel in the Old Testament. Jezebel in the Old Testament was the wife of a king yes. that tried to come in and destroy mm -hmm. the nation. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Jezebel in the New Testament that we're talking about right here is not the same one, Jezebel, from the Old Testament. The Jezebel in the New Testament had the same principle, the same itinerary, the same to come in and destroy. How do you go to God? But God says you got to open your eyes and watch. you got to be alert. Because if they were letting them come in and teach anything. Just to be looking at that. Look at me. Look how good I am. Listen, it ain't about who you are. It ain't about what you've done. But it's all about Him. It's all about it's not, it's not who you say or you preach. But it's about everybody knowing who He is. Number two, that he's against in the church, permitting her to seduce the servants in the church to commit fortification. Yes. Spiritual fortification. There's a difference. Amen. The church is a fool of today. Of fortification spiritually. Come on. They're denying the power of the cross. Amen. And they're looking for other ways to get glory and honor instead of giving the glory and the honor. That spiritual fortification. When you reject the power of God and you want to bring something else in, then you're going to get in trouble. Amen. What happened to the church of Pergamon is the same thing. They, let, they brought in doctrines of devils instead of bringing in the doctrines of God. Listen to me. When you start, and it don't happen all at one time, Listen to me. Little by little, you start drifting away. Little by little, you still, well, I can, I can slide by. And little by little, you're going to be denying what happened at the cross. You're going to be bringing things in that are unscripture, ungodly, and trying to get the people to say it's all right. Listen, Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I changed not. Number three, 
Same thing about the church of Pergamos. They were letting Jezebel put stumbling blocks in front of people. Yeah. Let me give you a warning this morning. Yeah. If you put a stumbling block in front of somebody, you're going to rest your soul. Because yeah. yeah. when you try to block somebody, because you're wanting to to get there before they are and you're wanting the anointing in your life before they get it and you're jealous because the anointing that God's wanting to put on them is you're trying to get it from yourself and God says you're putting a block in stone or stumbling block in front of somebody you're going to get in trouble by God not me Amen. but of God come on preach it pastor you know what the desire here it's for me. It's to push you. Yes. Did you get where you need to be with yes. God? Amen. I don't want to put a stone and a block in front of you, but I want to push you to wake up. I want to push you to get where you need to be because when you do, we'll all be blessed. I don't want to put a stone and block out. I don't want to stop you, but I want to help you to get where God wants you to be. There's so many people who things are going on in the church today. Yes. Stumbling blocks. Because mm -hmm. there are people who are afraid mm -hmm. that they're going to get more glory than somebody yes. else. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't need no glory. I don't Amen. want no glory. Amen. Because God says, I share my glory. Amen. No man. Come on. That ain't what I said. That's what he said. Yeah. 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 I share no glory with anybody. Listen to me. They ain't not a one of us in here died on the cross. Come on, yeah. They ain't a one of us in here that would give their only begotten son or daughter to take our place. And if you say you would, I know you're lying. God said, I'm going to send the best that I got in heaven. I'm sending my only begotten son. But he's going to die for me and you. He's going to take my place. And he did. And he didn't do it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because listen, he anguished in the garden. He said, Lord, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. But he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. If I can get a bunch of people in the church and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Whatever you want to do, Lord, I, I want to do it with Number four. Listen to me. They tolerated her in spite of knowing that they were wrong. They didn't try to stop it. They let it keep going to eventually it would destroy the church. Eventually if you keep letting it go, it's going to destroy you. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Equally. That's a that's lie. But I'm talking about walking for God. I'm talking about serving God. When you try to justify that it's all right, you get a new job. Some people go in and say, show me the shortcuts. Can I tell you, they ain't no shortcuts here. Amen. There ain't no shortcuts. He said it. You got to do it. You got to hold on. And you got to keep pressing on. And the thing about this church. God gave that opportunity to repent. Yes. Can I tell you this morning, God's giving you an opportunity to repent. Yes, he is. Listen to me very carefully. Might make some of you mad, but I'll pray for you. 
<laughs> if you think you're too good to repent, you better find an old-fashioned altar somewhere. Like and cry out to God because you just told a lie. Paul says, I have to repent. <laughs> To live a repentant life daily. Paul said, I got to crucify the flesh in me every day. Church, when we get to the point that we don't think that we're good enough, uh, hallelujah, glory to God, that we have to call upon God, uh, then we're in trouble. Can I, can I justify that? Wednesday night in church on the Bible study about giving, there were two men came to the the church to the temple to pray. Mm -hmm. The publican yeah. and the Sadducee. Yeah. The one came in boasting about, look at me, I, I'm this, I'm that, I've got this, and I've got that. And the other bowed his head and repented and he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Yes. Yes. I got to studying about that. The public and the one that repented, God blessed him. Yes. But the one that thought he had it all, that he knew it all, received nothing from God. Yes. Because if you go back and study what he said, he never asked God for one thing because he said, I already got everything that I need. When you get to the point in your life that you don't have to ask God for anything, you might have found an old-fashioned altar somewhere. Get that on your knees. Because I can't do a day without asking God. I need you to help me. I need you to give me strength. I need you to help me walk the way that I need to walk. You need to help me along the way. Don't be like that. Because when you quit thinking that you don't have to learn, two things is going to happen to you. You're going to die physically, and you're going to die spiritually. Yeah. And when that last breath comes out of your body, and you wake up on the other side, you're either going to hear, well done, my child, enter in. Because if you hear depart from me, you work of iniquity, your trouble is just starting. And I don't care. I don't want to hear that. I may not have a lot down here, but where I'm going to, I'll have peace. I'll have joy. I'll be happy. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because listen to me. I got enough pain now. Come on. In my shoulders, in my knees, in my ankles, and in my hips. Yeah. You get up and sometimes you gotta roll out of the bed instead of getting out of the bed. Because your joints or your uh, bursitis or your arthritis starts affecting you because I want to wake up on the other side and have a glorified body and when I lift my hands my arms won't hurt and my shoulders that I can dance around the throne of God and not get tired I can have a glorified body to know that my God he paid the price that I can come and be with him for eternity Hey, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss an opportunity of a lifetime. They talk about it on TV. You don't want to miss this opportunity. You don't want to miss anything that God has for you. Amen. So we gave her time to repent. And she did not repent. God's giving you time. Mm -hmm. Are you going to repent? Mm -hmm. Now, after we got through all of that, he says, this is things that Christians must do. Must do. Now, 
Number one, you got to hold fast until he comes. You got to hold on till he comes. Yes. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days, but you hold on. Amen. You hold on. Amen. You hold on. Yes. Don't get to where you want to throw in the towel and say, I quit. Jesus never quit at Calvary. He went all the way. Hallelujah. So he can have somebody in your corner. And when it gets tarsome and it gets hurt, and you don't know how you're going to make it, hold on. He's right there with you. He ain't left you. Hold on. Hold on. Remember where you used to be. And where he brought you from. And where you're at today. I've told you my story. I was a whiny drunk. And the drunker I get, the crier I cry. <laughs> whiny. My wife says, I still want <laughs> <laughs> We went to that graduation. Nathaniel and Zeke graduated this past week at the academy. Molly looked over and she said, My Lord, Sam, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. My heart. It's when I see people get blessed. I want to cry. And I'm not crying just to look at me, but I'm crying because, listen, look what God did for you. I'm rejoicing with you because I may be crying, but I'm rejoicing. And when things happen in our life spiritually, then we can rejoice with one another instead of beating somebody down. Number two, you need to learn to be an overcomer. Amen. Yes. The Bible says in Revelation, I want to say it's chapter 11, it's either 11 or 12. It says we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb yes. and by the words of our testimony. Yes. Glory to God. Why? Did he say it like that? Because it took his blood. Yes. For every one of us in here, it took his blood. Yes. And our testimony could sh that we share with people tells the world where we used to be yes. and where we are today. Yes. And that's powerful. Yes, because when we can let somebody know where I used to be, I'm an overcomer now because I've overcome what I used to be. I'm overcomer of the drugs and the alcohol that I used to take. I've overcome of the blood of the land because I know where God brought me from, where I used to be, what I used to be, and now what I am in Him. What I am in Him. Not in the world, but in Him. And we're an overcomer. Number four, things that we must do. Now, excuse me, number three. We need to keep doing God's work until the end. God don't tell you to quit. He says keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep doing what you're doing. People say, well, the preacher, the Lord sent for me to wait. You need to study that scripture out. The Bible don't say when it says they that wait upon the Lord. It don't mean to sit down and do nothing. It means to keep pressing on what you're doing until a new door opens for you. A lot of 
people that say, well, preacher, I'm waiting on God. They're sitting down. You're, you're, you're going to miss the door opening because you ain't continually doing what God's told you to do. Amen. Then we have promises that he gave us right here in this passage of Scripture. Yes. Promises. Number one, he gave us promise that we can have power. Yes. Preacher, I don't feel like I've got power. And you need to go back and do your first works over again. You need to go back and start over again. Been that done that got t-shirts out of it. <laughs> Listen to me. It takes a man or a woman to go back and start over again. Yes. Because listen to me, we're talking, we're studying on tithing now. Mm -hmm. God's also I'm studying not only tithing, but I'm studying in fasting. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And the church, as a whole, is shunned fasting out the door. Yes. Mm -hmm. Church, let me tell you something. There's power when you learn how to fast. Yes. Amen. There's power. Yes. When you truly know how to fast and not this, I'm fasting from Facebook and I'm fasting from cigarettes and I'm fasting from drinking for a week. That ain't a fast. That's feeding your flesh. And don't, listen, I drunk, smoke, and everything else. Don't, I know. And I know it's hard. It is. I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. I was a freight train. And I promised God, I said, Lord, I said, I can't preach and smoke at the same time. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I, the Bible says, search out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's between you and God. Mm -hmm. but, but I sat up and I smoked cigarette after cigarette, pack after pack, to five minutes to 12. February 3rd, 1991. I lit that last cigarette at about three minutes till. I put that cigarette out and I started praying. I said, God, I want you to call me to preach your word. And Lord, I, this is me. I can't preach and smoke. It's been 32 years as of two weeks ago. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's been days that I can smoke a cigarette this long. I can eat it. But there's listen. But all it takes is that one puff to get you back to what you need to be. When you take that first puff. God says, okay. Let me share something with you. When you ask God to remove something from you, and you take it back, seven times worse is going to happen to you the next time you try. God came in and cleaned the vessel out. And you will let the door open up and the door was to come back. But he'll give you power. Yes, yes, yes. And he talked about it at the church. He said, we'll give them power. Mm -hmm. The next thing that he promised them, <laughs> that he would crush all the resistance coming against you. Everything that comes against you, God will crush it. Mm -hmm. Now let me give you a warning right here. Don't get him to come and crush you. You pick it right back up after he crushes you. That's it. Come on. Don't. God took it out of you and crushed it for a reason. Just to come to a close. The last thing, when he gives you power, 
You have to learn that God will walk with you every day of your life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Christ will walk with you every day if you let him. Amen. Amen. You understand me? If you let him, Amen. he'll walk with you. Yes, he will. He'll give you power. Yes. You don't have to be like Jezebel. Come on. You can be just like the Jehovah Jireh, the son of a living God. You can be just like him. So what about you today? What's holding you back? What Jezebel in your life is holding you back from serving God? What is your Jezebel? What is whispering in your ear all the time telling you you can't do that? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. God says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. He says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every time that shall rise against me shall be condemned. That's the heritage. That's what I'm entitled to if I live for him. Yes, amen. I love my wife and my granddaughters here somewhere. I love every one of you all. But when I stand before God, I'm standing for me. Yes. When you stand before God, you're standing for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. They can't ride in on the coattail of your mama or your daddy. Yeah. You can't ride in on the coattail of your, your wife or your husband. You can't do that. Because no. you're going to stand before an all right. Mighty God. Yes. Let me, let me say it this way. You're going to stand before a righteous judge. The politics ain't going to play no thing. Your money ain't going to play. But he's a righteous God to separate. Yes. God don't need to be there. Yes. And it's up to you. Yes. I love to go grab my children up and grab them and bring them to the altar and say, now pray. I ain't, I, I'm wasting my time and their time. But when they come with a humble heart, they come crying out to God. Because a lot of people get the impression that the altar is for the sinner. No, the altar is for everybody. If you could open up this altar right here and see all the cry and all the tears and everything that's here on the altar, you'll see that there's been a lot more Christians than that has sinned. Yes. And that's what's wrong today. Churches are taking out the altar because they think they don't need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I gotta have it. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of peace mm -hmm. this place. Yes. I've got a lot of happiness mm -hmm. at this place. Yes. Listen to me. I ain't always got what I wanted right here, but I've got what's best for me right here. Because I've asked God for a lot of things, and he said, you don't need that. And I've had to cry and repent and say, I'm sorry. I said to say, I'm sorry. Lord, please forgive me. Because listen to me, it takes a real man or woman to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. First of all, you ain't here by accident today. God had you here for a reason. And the reason God had you here today is because you're struggling. You're battling. You've thought that I can handle it on my own because I'm tough. Because I can Let me share something with you. 
I don't care how tough you think you are, how, how bad you think you are, God has a way of bringing you down to your knees. Yes, he is. I bet people tell me, well, you're big. You ought to be able to take on anything. I'm nothing without him. Amen. Everybody hit bound that right close, yeah. please. No one looking around. If you're here today, you can say, Preacher, I need prayer. Because I'm battling right now. The Jezebel of my life is confusing me. I don't know which way to turn. I tell you, he's standing right here at this altar with outstretched hands. Could you raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I ain't going to drag you. I don't believe in dragging you to the altar. If the Spirit of God can't do it, I, I just pray for you. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. There's others in here. God's dealing with you right now. Right now, God's dealing with you. If you want peace in your life, it's only going to come by him. Amen. Paul explains it in the New Testament, peace that passes all understanding. What it means is no matter what you're going through, you can have peace that God will get you through the trial that you're facing right now in your life. Is there another one? You say, preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. God bless that hand. Is there another one in here? Say, pray for me. God bless that hand. Is there another one in here? Say, preacher, pray for me. Teddy, can you get up here and play? Yes, sir. Play something soft for me, sis. Okay, you can raise your hand. <coughs> You raised your head. There's some that didn't raise your head this morning, Hannah. God, your chest is pounding. It's pounding. Can I tell you something this morning? I can tell you how to get rid of that pounding. I can tell you how to get the peace back that you once had. It's in an old-fashioned altar. It's in an altar. and mercy to give you peace. She's going to play softly. Softly for you. If you raised your hand, even if you didn't, and you want to pray, would you come? She plays today. Don't put it off. Oh, preacher, I'll come back tonight. Tomorrow, you might not make it to tonight. You might not make it to walking out the door. You're guaranteed of one thing, you're going to stand before an Almighty God, a just God, and He's going to judge you. So, is there one in here today? You meet me here in this altar. Let's pray. I ain't going to embarrass you. 